What if I told you that Isaac Newton was kind of a bad boy? He was feared by some of the biggest gangsters in the late 1600s in London. And it wasn't for his gravity laws or the apple in the head incidents. It wasn't even for the telescope and all the physics that he contributed towards. It was because in 1696, he was made warden of the Royal Mint. To take up this position, he moved from the quiet little academic town of Cambridge to the Tower of London. But why did a quiet academic get chosen for such a bureaucratic job? That is because London was under attack, not from a foreign power at the time, but from inside. Criminals known as clippers were causing the British government billions of dollars in damages in today's money. They would not only create fake coins and counterfeits, but they would also shave off coins because coins at the time were actually holding their value in silver or gold. The Royal Mint would constantly try to make the coins harder to copy. However, the criminals were always a step ahead. The gangs were only growing bigger, although the punishment for those crimes was hanging for males and being burned alive for females. But Isaac Newton had a different idea. He knew that the key to solving this was not in understanding more about the money, but understanding more about the gangs and how this criminal underworld worked. He disguised himself and would walk the streets of London during the night, not only collecting information himself, but eventually building an entire network of informants. And inside his cane, there was a dagger for security reasons. Soon enough, his reputation with the criminal underworld is catching up to him. And in 1698, the most notorious criminal of all challenges him. His name is William Chaloner, and he has risen from a nail maker's apprentice to one of the most influential men in London. Chaloner continuously harasses Newton, even claiming that the government should hire him instead as he knows the inner workings of the business. He was known as the king of the coiners. But holding true to his mission, Isaac Newton just continued to do what he does, building the database, connecting the dots, and gathering evidence. And in March of 1699, the king of the coiners is finally convicted of high treason and hanged. Over the next 30 years, Newton not only achieved his original goal to make sure that the coins that were in circulation were replaced by safer alternative, but, but also introduced gold standards in all kinds of other processes on how to hunt the criminal underground. And of course, he's known for saying, I can calculate the movement of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people.